She was the last Aboriginal lady born on Corrandirk Aboriginal Reserve. Corrandirk Aboriginal Reserve today is known as Hillsville Sanctuary. So Hillsville Sanctuary was an Aboriginal Reserve and um, she was born there. She was the last female. Now, <coughs> Nalangita. Nalangita means head man of the tribe and that's been passed down from my great, great, great grandfather and his name was Babijan and Babijan was the leader when the English people first arrived here in Melbourne, just over 220 years ago. So when you stop and think about it, it's not that long ago since the English people arrived here. So over the last um, 200 years, this has been handed down through generation to generation. And it's always come down through the male line. It's always been a male who has been the Nalangita. But um, that will change because I do believe in female and male, I believe in equal rights, and when anything happens to me before I pass away, I'll be passing my title down to a female. There'll be a lot of male people who'll get their nose put out of joint, but that's my decision, and no one can challenge me on it because I have this last say. So, um, <clears throat> Corin Dirk was an Aboriginal reserve where Aboriginal people lived, and they worked the uh, farmland there, they grew hops so the English could make beer, they had a dairy farm so they could um, uh, supply the Yarra Valley in milk. So uh, my culture has come from the Yarra Valley and the Wurundjeri people roamed right through this area down as far as Cranbourne. So at Cranbourne they met up with the Bunurong people and they intermarried and traded. Now I'd like to sing a song in my language to welcome you upon our land. <coughs> and this is a song that's been passed down through generation to generation. Harabi gara gara bila ba bila ba gara bila ba gara bila ba bila 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 gara bila ba bila gara bila ba 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 bila gara bila ba gara bila Woman Jika, 
welcome. Welcome upon the land of the Wurundjeri people and also the Kulin Nation people. Now, <clears throat> 20, 2022, I think 2022 this year will be a better year than the last two years we've had. Uh, I feel that we're going to have a fantastic year this year. Uh, we have been in lockdown for uh, two years, but I can see the improvement uh, already. And um, this COVID, we can beat it, but we just got to keep on top of it. And I know the government are doing the right thing. And um, at the back, we have some Aboriginal flag. We have the Torres Strait Island flag. And we also have the Australian flag. Now, when you're doing uh, studies on flags, you've got to understand what the flag means. It was only this week, my people, the Aboriginal people of Australia, we've got the right to use our flag now because the government brought, brought the rights to use the flag, which they shouldn't have had to buy the rights. All Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people should have the rights to use it, like the Australian flag. So we start off with the Australian flag. The Australian flag is very significant to me because I live in Australia and I'm part of Australia. But also we have the Aboriginal flag. So everybody knows what the Australian flag means, but do you know what the Aboriginal flag means? Put your hand up if you know. Oh, I can see a lot of hands going up. Oh, I can see a couple of hands not too sure. Okay, so the Aboriginal flag, we've got the black. That goes on top. That is for the darker skinned people. You've got the yellow for the sun and the giver of life. You've got the red for Mother Earth, the Earth Mother. So that's what the Aboriginal flag means. Then on the far side, you have the Torres Strait Island flag. You have the green for the land. You have the black for the dark people. You have the blue for the ocean. And you have the, the uh, star in the middle for the uh, Torres Strait Islanders. And the headdress on the Torres Strait Island flag. So <clears throat> when you learn about flags, you must learn about three. Not just the Australian flag or the Aboriginal flag, but it's very interesting, when I go into schools, I'll ask students, what does the Australian flag mean? A lot of people do not know about the Australian flag and what it means. So you've got to study it and learn about it and learn about the other two flags. But your school is a very multicultural school, St Margaret's. It's a very multicultural and I love coming to a school where it's very multiculturalism because multiculturalism is very, very special and we all must learn to live together and live in harmony and peace with one another. And if we can all do that, we're gonna give our, grow up, have children, and we're gonna give our children and our grandchildren a better future to live in. Now, <clears throat> you notice we have the gum leaf. Now the gum leaf, the students will come up later on and pick up some gum leaves and take back. And some of the students in the junior school have the gum leaves. The gum leaf is your passport whilst you're upon the Wurundjeri country. So take, you take a gum leaf home, it will dry out, but keep it. Keep it beside your bed or put it in a drawer and just keep it. And if you're having a bit of difficult time at home or something at home or schoolwork, uh, just hold the gum leaf in your hand and that'll help you to relax and understand. So the gum leaf is very significant to the Wurundjeri people. As I said, it's a passport. Now, <clears throat> You had five Aboriginal groups within 100 kilometres radius of Melbourne. Those five groups, they all intermarried and traded into one another. They traded with one another and married into one another. Now, they were known as the groups of the Kulin Nation. Now, Kulin also means native man. Kulin also means nation, area. So those groups intermarried and traded. But when they would go Walkabout, you know as walkabout. Walkabout is going from one season of food to the next season of food. So when they'd go into that new area, like if we went down to the coast, down towards the other side of Cranbourne, to Mordialic, the Bunurong people would welcome us. Then they'd give us a, go a coastal um, gum leaf. If they come up to our country, we give them a mana gum leaf. That means that's your passport whilst you're on our country. And if anybody uh, queried you, you just pull out the gum leaf and show them, and that's your passport. 
to give you a safe journey whilst you're from the Wurundjeri land or the Munurong country. So the five groups, they had the different gum trees in that different areas. But the Wurundjeri people, we had the Managum. <clears throat> and the Managum, if we break Wurundjeri down into two words, Warren, Jerry. Warren is the white Managum and Jerry is the white grub that lives in the Managum tree. So it's two words, Warren, Jerry. We say we're Wurundjeri day today. And uh, <clears throat> so the Wurundjeri people were the, the Managum people. And also, we're known as the Yarra Yarra people. Now, Yarra Yarra, Yarra means water spirit ever flowing. And you can't change the course of a river. You must let the flow flow through with the, because um, the platypus, they live in the river. Now the platypus is the water spirit. It's very, very significant to Wurundjeri people. The platypus, they did not eat the platypus. They did not take their furs to use to make their uh, blankets or their clothes out of. <clears throat> now, the cloak I'm wearing today is made from possum skin. There's 30 possum skins here. <clears throat> it's all stitched together. And it's stitched together with what we call a kangaroo sinew. And um, the possums, cloak that I've got on, that's made from what we call a bowback possum. And the bowback possum lives up in the mountains. And the reason they use the possum skin because the leader wears the possum skin cloak, the Nalangita. But when it's time for the Nalangita to pass on and pass away, he's wrapped up and buried in that cloak. Then the new person who will take over, the next person takes over, they make their own possum skin cloak. So um, the possum skin cloak shows the authority because the mountain possum, uh, known as the Bograt possum, he lives up in the mountains and he's in charge of the mountains. So very significant, uh, the possum skin cloak. Um, you might see young Aboriginal people with a possum skin across their shoulders. Um, they're coming up into manhood or womanhood. You might see the young women wearing them. They're coming up into manhood or womanhood. So if we have uh, other Aboriginal people, they'll wear kangaroo skins. So the kangaroo skin <coughs> is worn by most Aboriginal people. And if it's in a very hot climate, they wouldn't wear kangaroo or possum skin. They would just wear um, gum leaves around their waist and that they would be hanging down around their waist. Because the Aboriginal people, my people, my ancestors, they did not have material like you have today. They made their clothes out of kangaroo or possum skins. Possum skins. So uh, coming to um, St Margaret's, it's very special to me. Um, I really you know, love coming here because of uh, multiculturalism in your school. And I think if we can all come together, work together in peace, harmony and respect, and I know that will go a very, very long way. So in my language, we say, Mungunjika, Mungunjika Naganga Kundua. And Mungunjika mean, have a good day and welcome. Thank you.